Healthy House on the Block and I'm here with our weekly video and tip on creating an indoor space that truly supports your health and your wellness. This week we are talking about a big improvement you can make to your home that will have a huge impact on your space. So I am all about the day to day for the most part. I think that what you do in your home every single day adds up to make it a very healthy space. But Every once in a while we have opportunities to improve our space in a really big way with a bigger project because every home has them now and then and this week we're going to talk about flooring. Now flooring is particularly important because of the vast surface area it covers in our home and it's a high touch area so this is an area that you can make a really positive change in and that's just what we're going to cover today. So I don't know about you but I'm assuming this is the case for most of us. We've done something and then immediately wished that you did it differently. It's honestly one of the worst feelings right off the bat, but I will say that this experience often offers a huge growing experience, which if nothing else is a positive that can come from a frustrating situation. So for me, this happened after moving into our current home and replacing all of the carpet with more toxic carpet. At the time, I knew nothing about toxin-free flooring or luxury vinyl plank flooring that could be low toxin. I just did what everyone else did at the time and I had fresh carpet put inside my house. Of course, within about a year, I started studying what makes a home sick or unhealthy, and one of the worst contributors to our indoor environment is carpet, especially if it was new. Of course, I also was not going to rip out all of the new carpet we literally just put in and spent a lot of money putting in. It was one of those learning experiences where I now know better and so I do better in the future, which is exactly what we've done. While yes, we still have that same carpet and yes, we plan to replace it someday, other flooring that we have chosen in the meantime has been done with careful research into not only the toxins in the floor, but the type of room or environment we plan to use it in. You see, not all flooring is best for every room in your home. You have to know what type of climate you'll be installing the floor in and understand if it's prone to humidity, if it has potential moisture intrusion, if it's extremely dry, or even if it's really, really hot. These all make a difference when choosing what type of flooring to install. And for us in our lowest level of our Minnesota home, luxury vinyl plank flooring made the most sense to combat the moisture and human environment of the basement. So we didn't take this choice as lightly as we once did with our carpet installation. Instead, we did our research and planned ahead, just like I teach in the Healthy Home Blueprint. And we made a better choice than before. And really, that's about the best we can do, isn't it? Do the best with the resources we have, the budget we have, and the time we have. So flooring is actually one of the most impactful changes you can make to a healthy home. If you want to make a change to your home that will have a big impact on not only the health and wellness of your space, but your own health and wellness, flooring is one of the biggest and it is one of the best. Flooring actually covers a huge amount of surface area in your home. This means that one of the most plentiful materials in your home is whatever you have on your floors. If there are numerous toxins in your flooring, especially those that off gas, those toxins will be in every area that your flooring is in too. So if you were to take out all of this toxic flooring and replace it with a lower toxin option, you would just multiply it by all the square footage that you're covering. That alone makes this a high impact change. Another reason changing flooring can be so impactful is it is a high touch surface area. We're almost always touching our flooring in some way. And if you have kids, they are touching the flooring 
even more frequently than we are. High touch areas in our home deserve our attention to make them as low toxin as possible. These are the areas that matter the most to our health and wellness. The things we are touching more often mean we have a greater risk of exposing ourselves to toxins. And the less toxic a high touch area is in our home, the healthier our space will be. So just like with any man-made product, there are plenty of toxins and added chemicals to luxury vinyl planking that are important to be aware of for your health's sake. So formaldehyde was the topic of conversation on the blog a few weeks ago, and now it's important to know that most luxury vinyl planks don't actually contain formaldehyde anymore. However, if you are looking at a laminate flooring, These potentially have formaldehyde in the outermost layer, the layer that's made to be super resilient and protected. Formaldehyde is a known carcinogen, but it also changes the natural way cells grow and reproduce within our body. And a newer study actually shows that it can cause issues to the neurodevelopment of the brain as well as the pulmonary system. Dioxins are probably the biggest concern when it comes to the toxicity of flooring. So because they are carcinogenic in nature, it obviously makes it a toxin to avoid. However, dioxins are also a very persistent toxin. They're made to stick around, and they certainly do. In some cases, dioxins have been found to travel hundreds of miles, negatively impacting our environment and animals, throughout the food chain. Dioxin is mainly a concern during the manufacturing of the flooring as it's a byproduct of polyvinyl chloride. However, it's very important to know that it can heat inside your home from appliances, climate, and living habits, and it can cause the dioxins to off-gas while in your home too. Flame retardants are seemingly in everything around your house when it comes to furniture and textiles. Flame retardants are chemicals that are present in the blood and urine of most Americans, and it has been linked to hormone disruption, reproductive disorders, respiratory disorders, and skin issues. It's especially toxic to children as it has been shown to disrupt normal and natural development within their bodies. So lead is one of the toxins that is covered in the California Prop 65 warning. The one positive about lead is that it cannot be absorbed through your skin and it cannot be inhaled unless it is present in dust. But lead has the ability to compound in our system quite quickly because our bodies don't detox it very fast. This is especially true, again, for children. So lead is a neurotoxin and it negatively impacts the health of the brain and can significantly delay development in children when they are exposed. And then finally, phthalates have been banned in things like children's toys, but unfortunately, they are still present in flooring that is produced. So phthalates are a hormone disruptor and negatively impact the hormone cell signal pathways. So due to this disruption, other systems in the body can be negatively impacted, especially the reproductive system. The CDC actually reported that over 90% of Americans have detectable levels of phthalates in their bodies from a variety of sources. And the group, again, most at risk for both exposure and negative impacts to health are children. Phthalates have been tied to learning and developmental disabilities in children due to just mild exposures. So, You have laminate floors installed or your home still has them and you're just not ready to change to something less toxic. What on earth can you do in the meantime? So the good news is there is plenty that you can actually do to just reduce toxins and off-gassing in your space. I want you to remember that most products off-gas for several months up to two years. If the product is over two years old, the off-gassing still does occur, but it is much less severe. So some things that you can do to minimize toxins in your space. 
using a shellac. You can seal in odors and some VOCs this way. They're a great way to seal in flooring and they can be a wonderful way to reduce toxins that off gas as well as toxins that you can absorb by touch. So you'll obviously want to test a very inconspicuous area or even use leftover flooring that you might have first to ensure that the product adheres properly and that you like how it looks. I personally love Vermont Natural Coatings. I love AFM Safe Seal and Ecos Varnish for this option. You'll also want to keep your humidity levels low. This is my number one rule when trying to reduce VOCs that are off-gassing. Obviously, you don't want it so low that your skin and body are suffering, but low enough to reduce the amount of VOCs that are off-gassed into the air. So usually this magic number is around 35% give or take a bit, you can simply use a hygrometer to detect your indoor humidity levels. So VOCs off gas more in humid environments. And so following just this small step, you can do your home and your body a huge favor. If you are wanting to really dive in and learn about the perfect humidity levels and how to achieve them in your own house, be sure to sign up for the link in this blog post that will bring you to the Healthy Home Blueprint waiting list. I have an entire module that will guide you to the perfect climate inside your home, and one of those lessons is all about humidity. So you'll also want to keep your temperature low. So again, VOCs like to off-gas in warm and hot environments. And the cooler your home can be, the less they will off-gas into your air. So obviously we want our homes to be comfortable, but if you can have it on the cooler side as well, you will prevent those toxins from off-gassing at a higher rate in comparison. This might even be something that you need to alter or change from room to room in your home based on the direction it faces, or if the door is closed frequently, or if it's near your furnace. And then finally, Lots and lots of fresh air. One of the best ways you can improve your indoor air quality and reduce as many toxins as possible in your home is by simply opening a window. That's it. That's, that's all it is. It's simple, but we forget to do it so frequently. They don't have to be open all day long, but even opening windows for 10 to 15 minutes per day is a great start. If you live in a very cold or a very hot climate, this may be all you're able to do on some days, and that is okay. Make it a habit and get fresh air moving in and out of your home on a regular basis to allow VOC toxins to exit through those windows. So luxury plank vinyl is a great option for just about any area of your home. However, there's some areas that it can be exceptionally good for. So moisture prone lower levels are perfect. LVP is what we call it, luxury plank vinyl, is extremely resistant to moisture and is a safe and healthy way to ensure that mold and mildew won't take over your flooring. If you have a lower level that is prone to moisture from either humidity or flooding, vinyl plank flooring is a great way to go. You want to make sure that you do add an appropriate underlayment to your flooring to ensure that moisture is kept away entirely. Entry areas are another one. I personally love this flooring for my entryway and mudrooms. Oftentimes shoes will come in with dirt on them and it can scratch wood flooring and tile flooring but luxury plank vinyl is just so resilient to scratches that it can withstand the dirt that come in on shoes on a constant basis. Add an easy to clean rug and boot tray for added help in keeping toxins and dirt out of your home. And just remember that those floors will get moisture on them and it will withstand it. And then finally, kitchens and dining rooms. One of the reasons I love this type of flooring for our kitchen and our dining room is that it is so easy to clean with a wet mop. Let's face it, a wet mop is a must in the kitchen and the dining room when families are eating there. And I also love that sometimes this flooring is not as hard as tile, and so you won't necessarily break a dish or a glass if it gets dropped. It can also be great because there are probably more spills and moisture in the kitchen and eating areas that flooring can withstand beautifully. So the beauty of the world we live in is that there are always lower toxin options 
that are relatively easy to find and more and more of them every day. I have two LVP flooring options that are as low toxin as they get while you're still getting the benefits of a true luxury vinyl plank flooring that is easy to care for and maintenance free. So this is my better option. This would be Shaw flooring. It's phthalate free, made in the USA. It's made of non-recycled products, which is a must, and it is very low toxin. My second option, the best option in my opinion, is Cali. They are phthalate free, they have a limestone composite interior, and they are also made from non-recycled products. The Green Design Center has actually tested Cali flooring in a controlled chamber and verified that they are very, very low VOC and they are perfect for a healthy home. So whether you're installing flooring yourself or you're having a professional do the work for you, it is very important to know that there are healthier ways of doing your project. You can ask your contractor about the methods I'm going to share or you can follow them yourself. So first, be very careful of tile demolition. If you'll be removing flooring such as tile, I want you to be aware that some tile can have glaze in the lead or in the interior of the product. And what this means for the health of your body is that you want to have your skin and your respiratory system fully covered. This means using gloves, eye protection, a hat, and a respiratory mask. Lead exposure can happen when dust particles are inhaled or ingested. So you want to keep as much of the dust off your body as possible. And what it means for your health of your home is that you want to avoid getting the dust anywhere it doesn't need to be. I want you to block off the room that you'll be working in and make sure that vents are covered to protect them from the dust getting into your HVAC system and pushing it around. And then finally, you want to make sure that the dust is cleaned up thoroughly to ensure that any potential lead is out of your home. I also want you to wear a mask during demolition, even if you're just visiting the demolition. No matter what type of flooring you're removing, chances are there are toxins of some kind. Carpet can actually be one of the worst as the fibers become airborne quite quickly and you can inhale them. So keep your lungs protected by wearing a mask of some kind to protect yourself from inhaling toxins and toxic particles while you're either in the space or while you're actually removing the toxic flooring. You can also seal any plywood subfloor before new installation. So if at any point during your project you have your subfloor exposed, this is an excellent time to seal in toxins and VOCs with a VOC blocker. So AFM has created a line of products that seal in VOCs to plywood and other pressed woods. This can help reduce formaldehyde and VOC exposure in your home. Just make sure that you have time to allow it to dry before you put new products on top of it. You can also do a dustless install method. So this is one of the best things you can do for your home during a project and definitely ask your contractor about this or do it yourself. This means that all the materials are cut outside prior to bringing them inside. This is going to reduce the risk of any sort of dust or toxic dust from entering your space. The key steps to a dustless install method are to block off your space so that dust is contained to one area. You will also want to block off any venting and turn off your HVAC system if possible during the installation of the flooring or components of the flooring. This is going to prevent dust from getting into areas of your home that are difficult to clean or where it can get spread around more. And then finally, cut all materials outside and bring them inside only for the installation. Finally, use an underlayment in wet areas. So most LVP does not require underlayment. However, if you'll be adding it to a basement or a lower level that can have potential moisture issues, it is important to consider underlayment as a way to prevent flooring from becoming damaged by moisture. I want you to check with your flooring manufacturer to see what the best underlayment option is or talk to someone in your hardware store to determine what is best for your product and your home. So no matter if you're choosing a toxin-free luxury vinyl plank or if you're just planning for the future, I want you to remember that you're doing your home a big favor by doing this high-impact project. 
be sure to get on the waiting list for the Healthy Home Blueprint where we cover a whole lesson on flooring and a whole module of planning ahead for your future. Thank you so much for being here. I am so thankful that you are here and turning your own house into a healthier space. I hope you'll subscribe to my channel because I will be here next week with another healthy house tip on creating an indoor space that truly supports your health and your wellness.